And I know when you were talking about our light day sunscreen, um, which is one of the longest names of a sunscreen ever, the light day sunscreen broad spectrum SPF sure. 37, um, but it is key to be utilizing a broad spectrum SPF. So the difference between UVA rays and UVB, let's kind of break it down and see why are we even using a sunscreen? What do those rays mean and how are they damaging to the skin? Sure. So um, UVB is of the two the most powerful. When you look at the strength of UVB, you measure strength of both of them in wavelength. So UVB is a much shorter wavelength. It's condensed, which means it has about a thousand times the energy of UVA. And it doesn't penetrate as deep in the skin, but it really, really significantly damages epidermal keratinocytes and melanocytes as well. So when you protect against UVB, that's really where the number comes into play. UVA penetrates deeper in the skin. It's a longer wavelength. It doesn't have as much energy, but it's extremely damaging to the tissue and the protein that we find uh, functioning in the dermis. So categorically as a whole, they're both extremely problematic. So you need something that's going to protect against all those wavelengths. Zinc oxide is probably the one that filters out most of those radiate, most of those rays again, because it reflects everything, but not all of them. So if you're formulating a sunscreen, you've got to make sure that you're putting together enough of them to filter out all of those different wavelengths, right? So that becomes the biggest challenge. And UVB in particular is the most damaging also as far as cancer and any potential for DNA damage? Sure. Again, it's because of the energy, right? It's the amount of energy that you see. It has a, the high level of potential of cross-linking those DNA structures. And I think I mentioned earlier, when you cross-link DNA structures, that can create dimers. The dimers, uh, we have the ability to repair some of that damage. It's actually something called excision repair which we talk about a lot in some of our classes is the DNA repair mechanisms that the body has already. That's part of our circadian rhythm function, but the system becomes overwhelmed. If there's unprotected skin that you know is constantly being exposed to the sun, we just don't have the ability to repair that continuously. So once that happens, you end up with those dimers becoming mutations and the mutations can ultimately lead to skin cancers. And that's one of the biggest issues. When we look at um sun protection, we have an SPF of 37, which is a little bit odd um, having an uneven number like that, but we always get asked, how much should you be using? How frequently should you be reapplying? So what's the equation and what does that number on the bottle really mean? Sure, absolutely. So again, I, I think it's important for everyone to understand that the number only tells us how much UVB protection we can expect. And this is the, the set of rules. Every, every OTC drug uh, in the United States that the FDA regulates has what's called a monograph, right? So the monograph is the set of rules that we have to follow. And that changed for the first time in 2011 since 1974. So all these new rules and regulations, which was great, it was welcomed because again, there were, it, it was very antiquated, very, very dated. So the number actually came from the fact that it, whatever the number came back as is what was supposed to go on the package. Now that's changed again. Prior to that, if we had an SPF 37, we could still call it a 30 as long as we weren't saying it was more protection than it actually was. Uh, but it's changed again, so we're, we're kind of adjusting our, 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 um, our number to that. But the reason why we got an SPF 30, we were actually formulating, sorry, we got a 37, we were formulating an SPF 30, but we added a number of what are called photostabilizers. And photostabilizers are designed to make um, standard sunscreen technology that we have in that product more effective over a longer period of time. So when we look at the function of uh, chemical screens versus physical screens. They're clearly doing two different things. And the physical screens, again, are designed to reflect ultraviolet radiation, but chemical screens are functioning a little bit differently. They're designed to absorb the energy, but they have to do something with it afterwards. And usually they're diffusing that energy somewhere, and usually the only place for it to go is into the skin. When a chemical screen is applied to the skin, it's essentially in the ground state. It's not doing anything until it's exposed to the ultraviolet radiation. Once that happens, it goes to a higher energy orbit called the singlet state. But from the singlet state, it's desperately trying to get rid of that energy, and then it moves down to what's called the triplet state and almost immediately dumps that heat energy into the skin. That's where a lot of the issues of chemical screens come from. It can generate photosensitive reactions, it can generate unwarranted heat, 
but after it gets rid of that energy, it recycles back to the ground state so that it can once again absorb more ultraviolet radiation. So you can make the comparison that chemical screens are almost like sponges, right? Sponges are designed to absorb water, but they can only absorb so much, they have to be wrung out. But once they're wrung out, they can absorb again. So you can think of the chemical screen as absorbing a certain amount of energy, but once it has all the energy that it contains, it has to be wrung out and then it can absorb again. The issue, of course, is the heat energy. It gets dumped into the skin, that's the problem. We utilize in the Circadia product, the sunscreen, the photo stabilizer called Solastay. And this is an incredible technology that was developed a number of years ago by some really, really brilliant guys over at a company called Hullstar. And what it does is it helps to quench the excited state molecules without diffusing the energy as heat into the skin. So it really helps to deal with a lot of the negative aspects of utilizing a sunscreen. It essentially makes them safer and more effective over a longer period of time. It's one of the reasons why when we were formulating an SPF 30, we started testing the product and we were consistently getting an SPF 37. So that's why when we get the question, why is it an SPF 37? Well, that's how it tested. Right? But again, at the time we were formulating the product, the FDA had changed the rules and the number that you get during the test ends up on the packaging. So again, the rules have changed. They have adjusted a little bit to make it a much more universal product with other regulatory bodies uh, in different countries that regulate sunscreen. We will be changing it once again, but it's really the evolution of the performance of the sunscreen. And you know, with physical screens, there are some of the same issues, right? There is some of that absorption that you get from the molecules and the same company has made some really interesting technology. And that's part of the new launch that we've got coming up as well. So really the most important thing for professionals to understand and be aware of is that you've got to have a good sunscreen. You need to be uh, protected from the sun, especially at the highest level of energy between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And of course, you know, as long as you're protecting the skin, you're helping to avoid all of the damage, but also all of the hard work that estheticians have done for treating pigmentation, for addressing expression lines, the breakdown and the integrity of the skin. If you don't use a good sunscreen, you know, as my grandfather used to say, you're just shoveling sand against the tide. It's gonna come back and it's gonna come back worse. So very, very important to use a good sunscreen. I think I alluded to the fact that UVB only tells us how much protection we can get, or sorry, the number only tells us how much protection that we can get from UVB. It also has to say broad spectrum protection, which tells us how much UVA protection we get as well. So very important to have both.